Hey guys, Shane from Behold Gamers. Today I want to give you a quick tutorial about Above VTT. It is a browser plugin for Chrome users that are also using D&D Beyond that allows you to turn your D&D Beyond campaign into a virtual tabletop. So before we jump into today's video, be sure to subscribe to our channel here where I give more updates on online Dungeons and Dragons play. Next week I'll be going over my online D&D setup I'll give you an idea of how I run my D&D games online right here from my computer. All right, so let's jump in and take a look at what we've got here. Uh, Above VTT is just a browser plugin. If you're using D&D Beyond and you use Chrome as your browser of choice, you can get this plugin and it turns your D&D Beyond campaign into your virtual tabletop. Once you have the browser plugin installed, you'll have these new buttons down below for Above VTT. I'm going to join as a DM and I'll start off with a new scene. So we need to go to scenes, this button on the top here, and add scene. Uh, they have a few options. You can choose from official D&D Beyond maps, so whatever content you have unlocked. Uh, for this one, let's open up Dragon of Ice Spire Peak. This is one that I use pretty regularly on these tutorial videos. Uh, let's take a look at Umbridge Hill. The Umbridge Hill map here, very simple. You can see this is a Dungeon Masters map that they have available here. Uh, they also have a player version that you can download. So I'm going to import it in and you can see uh, the scene title, Umbridge Hill. You have the player map. So this links the player map into what the players will see. And then you have your dungeon master map, what the DM in the campaign will see. And then you can just enable and disable the DM map. Uh, so before we even jump to the map, I can cover the whole thing with fog or I can just import it as is and do fog myself. I'm just going to bring it in as is so you can see it. And you can zoom in and out with the plus and minus buttons kind of up towards the top right. So I'll zoom out a little bit there and scroll around. You can just use your mouse wheel to scroll around the map. Uh, so here in this adventure, players will be up against a manticore and there is an NPC inside of the hut here as well. So all I need to do in order to import the monsters into this map, I'm going to come up to this monsters tab on the top right and I'm going to search for manticore. And so once you have this monster in place, all you have to do is hit add and the token drops onto the map right there, sort of towards the middle. So the manticore is usually up over here. And now it's time to put your players onto the map. I come to the players tab right next to the monsters tab and we're going to go ahead and add them in. So I need to upload the character sheet first. And that way it communicates with the tracker here. You can see, okay, so Thalmor's, uh, little tab there under the players drop down is now updated. From this character sheet, you can scroll through and do all of your attacks, everything that you need right here, and it'll update the game log. So I'll show you that just a bit, and I'll show you that right now. So if I'm going to make an attack with my crossbow, just like you would if you were rolling on your D&D Beyond character sheet on the website, you click that hit DC, it rolls your dice, it shows you the roll, and it will update the game log. So now you see the game log is updated in red and it shows you the role right there. Uh, so very easy feature to use right there. It's basically using all of the features you already know from D&D Beyond and imports them into this virtual tabletop environment. So let's come back to players because we actually need to put the token down. So I'm gonna click on the token and you'll see Thalmor pops up. Uh, so we will put the token wherever we want on the map, however they want to make their approach. And because now we're closer into the action, let's zoom in on the map. So we'll just keep hitting this plus button until we get in on the action. And now it's a lot easier for us to take a look and to manage this combat from a lot closer view. So let's take a look at some of the other features that are available to us here. Uh, obviously, I showed you the players tab, the monsters. You can do all kinds of searches, imports, and add the tokens in. Uh, before we start a combat, though, let's take a look at putting Fog of War up on the map here. There's no sort of dynamic lighting or anything like that. I personally don't use things like that on my VTTs. I just don't see a need for them. I never have dynamic lighting when I'm sitting down at a table in person, so why do I need to do it at a computer? It's just not something that I use. I know a lot of people are big fans of it. It's a big draw for people that play on things like Roll20 and other virtual tabletops like that. But for me, when I play online, I really prefer to have it be more like sitting down at a table, I've got my friends around the table and they can all see what I see. There are just a few things that I want to limit. So uh, that's where Fog of War comes into play. So let's take a look. I'm going to drop in some fog here. And because the room that I'm looking at here that I want to block is square, I'm going to select the square hide button. 
And from there, I'll just cover it up. And the players will not be able to see what's inside of this building. Uh, if you wanted to cover up all the map and do more selective revealing, you can just select all. Uh, it'll bring up this pop-up menu, making sure you want to do it. You just hit OK. It'll throw fog over the whole map, but I actually don't want to do it that way. Uh, but you can see here the fog that I have covered up here, players won't be able to see into that build. The draw tool is not as important to me, but it doesn't feel as intuitive. They have a bunch of different shapes that you can do. So if I wanted to draw a square, I can select it and do that. You can choose whether the shape that you're adding is transparent, whether it's solid or whether it's just an outline. So for example, if you're doing sort of a wall spell and you want to make it a circular wall surrounding a space, I'm going to select border and circle, and I'm just going to draw the circle out in the area that I want it to be in. And there you have it. So there is my wall spell. If you watched my reaction video to when VTT first released, uh, one thing I asked for was that they change the way the draw tool works as far as creating a layer and how the draw tool doesn't affect your mouse cursor clicking tokens. Uh, if you look here, the example that I gave back then was using the cone tool as the origin point uh, for the spell. So you can see now, even though I have my cursor on top of the token, I can actually draw still without affecting that token with the mouse cursor. Before this feature was added, when I would do it, I would not be able to draw with that origin point on top of a token because it would actually trigger the mouse cursor to move the token rather than draw the shape. Uh, but that's something that they updated, so I appreciate the developers working on that. That is very cool. One other feature they added now is this polygon tool. So I'm going to actually make this filled so you can draw your own custom shapes on the maps here. So you can just choose what kind of shape you want to add. And I got a big stop sign. So that is the fog of war and the drawing tool. The other feature I absolutely need when I work with a virtual tabletop is some sort of measuring tool. And they actually have that here. And because this map is already pre-measured with the five by five grid setup, I never had to do that on my own because they set it up already. Uh, it's really easy to use. So I can just mark I know I can move 30 feet, so I'm going to show where that is when I move to those different squares. And then when you want to select your tokens again, you just come back to the select button and you can move your tokens. So now let's take a look at combat. Uh, I use the combat, just open it up over here, and I'm going to now add a monster into combat here. All you need to do is go to the token that you have selected and right click and add to combat tracker. And you can do the same thing for a player. And once you have that in there, you can roll initiative, have players roll their own initiative because there is a button here to roll initiative, but it will only roll for the monsters. So once your player rolls their initiative, we'll add it in, we'll just make it 20. And then you hit reorder and it puts everyone in their initiative order. And once you're ready to start combat, all you do is hit this next button and it puts up a green indicator to show you which character is up in combat right now. And so every time you hit that next button, it'll move to the next one down the line and keep going until you get back to the top. So very simple to use right there. Uh, but let's take a look at more of these right click features that you have on your characters and monsters. So over here, you can open up a monster stat block and it just pops out right next to the combat tracker. And now that D&D Beyond has added clickable roles on their NPC sheets, it's very easy to do. You just hit the button and it updates the game log automatically. With above VTT in their game log, you can now choose to show it to players or to just leave it so you can be the only one looking at it. Uh, the other clickable features that are here, you can adjust the token size. All you have to do is change the size right here, small or medium. It changes the size of the token. You can also very quickly and easily add conditions to your characters and monsters. Let's go ahead and add the blinded condition here. And you can see it updates the token right there on the map. And it gives you a little hover over tooltip that you can see right there on your virtual board. Uh, you can also add these, what they call reminders. So if this creature is somehow concentrating, flying, any of these options you can select. You can also create custom ones just by selecting a color. Uh, you can also on the fly change the current and max HP if you wanna change either of those. Uh, and you can also hide a token from players. So if you have something that's invisible or hidden, 
you can go ahead and do that yourself right there very quickly and easily on your map. And when you're done, if the monster dies, you just delete the token. And for the character tokens on the map, a lot of the same things there. The only thing you can't change here is gonna be the current and max HP. Uh, so with the game log feature here, you can also just put in your own custom roles or you can add to the chat. When you open up above VTT, they have a guide that you can follow that has a lot of the commands listed over here. You can use either slash roll or slash DM roll if the DM is the only one that wants to see the result of that roll. If you're not using another voice or video chat service like Zoom or Discord, they have a video chat that you can use right here at the bottom left, which opens up your camera and microphone to be able to communicate with your players as a group. So you can see here, it opens up that window on the bottom and you can even pop up the screen a little bit more. Uh, so once your players join in, everybody will show up right there on the bottom of your virtual tabletop. So a really nice feature, very reminiscent of Roll20. Uh, so for those of you that are using Roll20 already, uh, this will be a very familiar feature for you. Let's take a look at some of the features outside of Above VTT and how they communicate together with something like a Discord server or the official D&D Beyond app. If you're a player using D&D Beyond, but you're not using Above VTT, you can still play in a game with those that are on Above VTT. You're just gonna be doing it a little more theater of the mind type of style. So let's take a look at what I mean here. So if I'm playing as Thalmor, who's there on the map, and I wanna make an attack, you can still use the D&D Beyond app to make all of your rolls. I just click on the app, and it shows up on the game log right here on your screen. So everybody else can see what you just rolled using your app, and it communicates with D&D Beyond and above VTT. So it updates the game log completely there. So if you are communicating with some other uh, voice or video chat service like Discord, and you're not able to get to a browser where you can use above VTT, you can still play in a game where other players and the DM are sitting there looking at a map. So options available to players and dungeon masters who go with different styles, uh, those that might not be able to use the same features at every given moment. Thank you guys very much for checking out today's video. I hope that you find this helpful. For those of you that are using D&D Beyond, I find Above VTT to be a very powerful tool for us right now. Uh, I, I know that D&D Beyond, they're working on creating their own virtual tabletop environment. If you watch any of the dev updates on YouTube, you know that it's not a big secret that that's what they're moving towards. You just have to read between the lines a little bit. They're almost explicitly saying that that is the direction they're moving in. Above VTT is probably exactly what you're looking for to use your content to play exclusively online. And with linking it up to a Discord server or using the new D&D Beyond app, it makes it that much easier to connect with your players who might not be able to sit down at a computer using a browser screen, but still want to play with their group just the same. So thank you guys very much for checking out today's video. If you found it helpful, please leave a like down below. Tell me what you think about a virtual tabletop like Above VTT and how you play online. Next week, I'll be showing you my online setup before I start showing you a little bit more content about how I play in person and even how I've made some money as a dungeon master playing D&D online. Thank you guys very much again, and as always, have fun, learn lots. Hi, we will be restarting our fundraising for Extra Life for Kids! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, last time, we got written up in our local newspaper, so we're very excited to do this again and raise funds for our local children's hospital, uh, Kapiolani Medical Center, right here in the state of Hawaii. So we're very excited about that. We always love to help out, especially uh, families and kids who 